start off by telling me, giving me a debrief of the first two races of the 2012 season. Okay, so uh, a, a general debrief, obviously the first race in Australia, um, in terms of the programme we completed on Friday and the items we had to cover all passed reasonably smoothly. Um, obviously, Australia being a temporary circuit, there's a lot of circuit evolution in terms of the way the grip comes in, so we uh, worked hard on some basic setup uh, areas, tyre pressures, ride heights, and then some background items. And then um, Saturday qualifying, I have to say in Australia, probably didn't get the most out of the car, had a little bit of traffic. Um, both drivers came back thinking it was a bit more possible, really, so that was a little bit of disappointment. But generally, we were closer um, than the same time in 2011, and ultimately, uh, for the race, the race pace was uh, where we expected to be, so uh, a step closer relative to the end of uh, the 2011 season. Um, the performance was looking good on both of the tyre types up until the point where unfortunately we had to retire both cars for uh, unrelated uh, issues. But uh, yeah, race pace very positive, qualifying pace slightly less positive, but we worked on that a little bit for uh, Malaysia. And the Friday programme in Malaysia again was uh, a little bit reordered because of the threat of rain on Friday which didn't come so in fact we did something we didn't need to do by reordering the program but anyway we got the data, ran the uh, long runs, uh, undertook the background work, a little bit of extra work with Kurs, uh, making sure we had the recovery maps as we wanted them and uh, we were optimised on the deployment of Kurs. and then for qualifying in Malaysia both drivers got closer to the optimum out of the car um, so hence the gap to the cars ahead was reduced However, there's still more to come there. We've got to get more out of the tyres over a single qualifying lap. And then in the race, obviously, with the, the weather playing its part and actually um, causing uh, a lot of extra work in terms of tyre changes and strategies, we were pretty much okay in terms of that. Vitaly did a good race. We made the right calls in terms of getting the right tyres onto the car at the right time. With Heike, he struggled a little bit more with the tyres uh, the intermediate tyre specifically, so he had a bit of a tougher time. We made an extra stop with him to try and help him and also to gather more data to try and understand what the problem was. Um, two car finish, positive in the home race. Um, Vitaly's race pace, pretty good. Heike probably didn't show as much as he should have done really, but we've got to understand and we're currently working on um, trying to understand the issues there, whether a car, tyre, um, whether there's anything else we could have done with the setup to have helped him. So all in all, first two races, reasonable. Um, to get the cars home in the second race. We've understood a lot about the uh, wet running and the integration of the curves and also the understanding the new cars progressing along nicely, but we've got more work to do in qualifying. Just tell me, a little, elaborate a little bit for me on curves. Obviously, that's the first time we've actually used them in a race situation. Um, how did they, did they perform how we expected and did the drivers get on right with it? Um, I think, yeah, I mean, I think generally curves, right from winter testing as well, the integration of curves into our car has progressed and I've been in accomplished with uh, less trouble than we expected and less than RBT expected as well so we're quite pleased with that but in, as the drivers get more familiar with the cars then um, we have to start working on the way in which we recover the energy that's a little bit dependent on circuit type it's also dependent on the way the driver uses the brakes so we've had to quite some work to do there we took a step forward in winter testing Australia the circuit type made it fairly simple but in Malaysia we had some more work to do again it's a different type of circuit um, with both drivers we worked a little bit on uh, making sure the car balance wasn't affected when we were um, recovering the energy. And then in terms of deployment, um, Red Bull made some extra functionality available to us in the race so we could get a bit more performance out of the curves. Um, it's worth on track, is a simulated, which is positive. Um, the drivers have commented that it's a good tool for attacking and defending against other cars, which is positive and it has its benefits off the line, although in, in uh, um, Malaysia with the wet conditions we didn't really um, use it in such a way but uh, yeah generally it's been quite good but it's something you have to keep on top of circuit to circuit you can't just say oh we're set up let's not worry about it it's something which is evolving along with the car development so so far so good um, yeah we're happy with it. So jean we could just start off by talking me through the, the first two races of the season technically how did we get on? Well, obviously, it's it's always a very very interesting part of the championship because after after winter testing, it's where really the the, the values of the of the teams are shown. Everybody's always waiting for Saturday in in, in Australia, obviously. So uh, we went there quite uh, well prepared. The car was uh, much more much more advanced. Uh, uh, stage compared to previous years, so I think uh, it was a very good effort from uh, the whole team. 
and obviously our testing was actually quite good. We had some pretty good results. Reliability was good. Um, how did that com How did our first race actually compare in terms of, of what you were expecting? Well, probably there's still some work we need to do in terms of making the, the tyres work, um, especially in Australia and uh, and especially in qualifying. Um, other than that, I think uh, everything uh, went uh, quite well. Uh, the, the race pace was actually where, where we're expecting it to be. Um, qualify still still needs some some work uh, in order to, to, to match the same the same level of performance. Talk me through Vitaly, obviously he's your your driver, your you know yeah. race engineering him. Um, what's it like fitting in with a new driver and, and how is it you like to work with? Well, it's uh, I, I started to work with him uh, towards the end of uh, of this year uh, pre-season testing. Um, he's a very direct guy, uh, which uh, um, it's actually very a very positive thing because he immediately says what he thinks. There's no filter, and this in our environment means that the workflow just goes much much quicker. And then uh, to say that after the first uh, race and then the second race, obviously the relationship starts to build up, and uh, he's much more relaxed, and uh, he somehow now knows and really believes that we are all working with with. A, specific purpose of making him faster and um, I'm happy to say also that we're having quite, quite good fun on the track and we, we also have the time to, go to have some good laugh so it's, it's all good really. And people put a lot of emphasis on the relationship between a race engineer and a driver and obviously you know with Jano for example you've worked together for years and years how long will it take for you to develop that kind of relationship with the time and how important is it? Well, the relationship is extremely important uh, because um, the, all the technical information uh, flow is mainly between uh, the, the driver and the race engineer. So it's, it's really important that this communication is uh, uh, clear, complete and, and also very fast because uh, we have the briefings when the car is not running but some vital information needs to be uh, transferred while the car is running and obviously there's not a lot of time to discuss things and so the, the, the non-verbal communication comes into place and this is where the race engineer needs to understand what the driver means uh, because all drivers use the same word obviously but they mean sometimes slightly or sometimes uh, also sensibly different things and this is something that you learn uh, working with the driver. Obviously uh, this kind of uh, uh, creating, uh, building a relationship is a skill that a race engineer needs to have and, uh, and I would say that uh, uh, this process of, of knowing each other much better and, and improving the relationship is, is actually going very fast. Took me through Malaysia, obviously actually Vitaly's race pace was looking really, really good. Um, you know, he was keeping up with the cars in front. How is it from your point of view and what were the main bonuses and pluses from that? It was Malaysia. It was a very exciting race for us because, uh, um, as you said, uh, it was well. First of all, it was a very, very mixed conditions race, which is obviously makes, makes it very interesting and uh, and exciting. And plus, uh, Vitali had a very, very strong uh, race pace. He was for several laps. He was on the same pace with with cars that are faster than us uh, in other parts of the races cars which should on the paper be much quicker than us couldn't overtake him or couldn't overtake him in, in easily so I was very 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 happy about that because he showed that he can um, he can show a, a very uh, good race pace in very very different conditions particularly for a guy who's only been in, in our team for not very long and not driven that car very much um, obviously we're in reception of the uh, Caterham F1's headquarters. Um, just talk me through what you've got to do now in preparation for the next two races, China and Bahrain. Yeah, it's been a real rush actually because straight after the race in uh, Malaysia we headed to the airport, jumped on the plane, landed at 9 o'clock, straight in the office. So it, it's it's obviously a bit of a, of a, of a rush uh, really and that what we're doing now is analysing the previous uh, event, which in this case in, is Malaysia and this should be done maximum, let's say, by tomorrow, and then we are shifting our attention completely to, to the next two events, because it's going to be a back-to-back -back again with, with China and Bahrain. So 
simulation analysis of previous years and uh, preparation of the setup discussion with the other engineers and the driver and, uh, and off we go. Yeah. So will you be in contact with Vitaly um, between now and China to talk about the, the upcoming race or is everything that you do in a factory purely simulator, you guys working at your computers? There's, there's obviously a lot of work is done uh, from an engineering point of view but I am in touch with Vitaly almost uh, daily obviously because first of all there are items the need to change in the car from a comfort point of view as well or, or just because of driver controls which are different and is obviously still adapting let's say to our car and also we need to adapt our car to him and also to tell him what technical developments we're bringing to, to the next race and, uh, and in which direction we want to, to start with the setup so the communication needs, need, needs to be continuous any days off, or is it all flat out right up to China? Uh, and I, I, might, I might try to squeeze one or two days off. Cool, thank you very much.